Well, I'm delighted to say I've finished the Great War Symphony, both the vocal score and I've also finished the full score, the orchestration. Um, I've made a mock or draft um, vocal score, as you can see here, and it's great to finally be able to hold my symphony. The fourth movement I've called Finale, and it begins with the text from the Requiem, Dies Irae, Dies Illa, Solvet Seclum in Favilla. That day, that day of wrath, which will dissolve all the world in ashes. It's the denouement, it's the final kind of crisis of the whole war. Which way would it go? And of course it looked as if it could go either way. Um, I can actually play you a little bit of the Dies Irae on a, on a kind of demo I've, I've done here. Um, these strings. Dies 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 So you can hear there the pounding strings and lots of brass and the, the choir are antiphonal, answering one another. Um, and that is the kind of the musical basis for the whole movement because I maintain the triplets and there's also the whole tone scale which is like a germ through the whole movement. But then there has to come a turning point and the tenor soloist um, sings a fantastic poem uh, by Geoffrey Dermer, called The Storm Night. And the tenor sings of the peals of splitting thunder rolls and says that still this war goes on, still the howling guns and star shells rise. But then there's this kind of prayer, which for me spoke of this kind of watershed. Give ear, O Lord, our very manhood cries. Shell fodder, yea, but spare our human souls from fury shaken skies. Um, the chorus then enter um, and speak of this desire now for peace, which leads into um, a great sentence from a poem by Thomas Hardy, uh, which is a poem about the armistice, actually. But I love this, these two sentences. Calm fell. And we go there from C sharp minor to C sharp major. And those words are the first words the soprano sings in this movement. Calm fell from heaven distilled the clemency. There was peace on earth and silence in the sky. And from that moment on, the fourth movement is an act of homage to those who died. And there's a whole wealth of material. But to begin with, I chose the poem by Rupert Brooke from the dead. Blow out ye bugles over the rich dead. And I absolutely love the second verse of it, which somehow conveys the majesty that I wanted to convey. They brought for us, for our death, holiness lacked so long and love and pain. Honour has come back as a king to earth and paid his subjects with a royal wage. A nobleness walks in our ways again, and we have come into our heritage. So important. What those men and women sacrificed is our heritage, and we have come into that heritage. We are the inheritors of it, which is very important. Then I, I could hear the last post. I wanted to involve the last post. And so the trumpet, first trumpet in the orchestra, will change to a B-flat bugle and play the last post. But against it, I set those all-important words, we shall not grow old as they that are dead grow old. Uh, they're sung by the soprano soloist with um, the chorus in the background. And I feel that moment's going to be very moving. But I wanted to eat, uh, sorry, I wanted to end on an upbeat note and I chose a poem by the American female poet Moira, Moira Michael um, O you who sleep in Flanders fields 
sleep sweet to rise anew. And it's a response to the, um, to the Macrae poem in Flanders Fields. Uh, and she speaks about the poppy. Michael had, had a great uh, part to play, actually, in the way in which we use the poppy to remember the war dead. The final verses, and now the torch and poppy red, we wear in honour of our dead. Fear not that ye have died for naught, will teach the lesson that ye wrought in Flanders fields. And again, I think I can just play you a little bit of this, which I set as this march, which grows and grows in intensity to, to this triumphant climax. So on. You could hear there the fife. I wanted the fife and the drum there. Yeah, a great uh, kind of soundbite from the First World War, um, and that's based on a on um, a Canadian uh, marching melody called the Maple Leaf March. So there we are. That's the end of the symphony. I don't want to play too much of it to, to give it away. But I can promise that the end is both very moving and as well very uplifting. And I feel I've um, created four individual movements, but they do hang together. And Mahler once said that the symphony is a world. And I do feel, I, I hope, I've distilled the world of the First World War into the symphonic genre. And now onto the recording which we begin in just over three weeks in Abbey Road. And uh, I'll certainly be speaking about that on my blog.